Those things smell terrible, don't they? I'm sorry, I hadn't planned to use them, but uh, you were sleeping for so long. And I'm usually a very patient man, but I'm short of time today. I have some things I need to pick up for my wife and my daughters and my nieces, too, on Fifth Avenue. And I also like to visit my favorite tailor when I'm in town. He must be 75 now. I always make the time to see him when I come here. It's a dying art, you know. I have many tailors that I like back in my country, and they're good, but, well, <laughs> this is New York. Hmm? I did have a favorite tailor that lived in Buenos Aires, but he died. Must be like five years ago. He made, ah. Oh, Fantastic three-piece suits. Very comfortable, had a certain flair, but always kept an impressive commanding style. You know? hmm. yeah. There was something about his cut that was unparalleled. And how he did it, I don't know, because the man could hardly see. He was blind as a bat. His glasses were as thick as my thumb, and yet somehow, he saw that cut. <laughs> I heard that his wife buried him in a cheap Armani knockoff. Uh, hmm, maybe he'll haunt her, because I can tell you he'll never rest wearing that for eternity. <laughs> I saw in your closet your clothes. You have expensive taste, Michael. That car you drive, that's a piece of shit. But it's expensive. The things we own, the things we choose to possess, they say a lot about a man. It's okay. You can look at it if you like. It's kind of knotted, no? My daughter once told me that it looked like a tree branch. I can see that a little bit. Children. It's so interesting the way they look at the world sometimes. You know, when I was a boy, my father gave me a puppy, a Rottweiler. I got him, he must have been two weeks old. Yeah. I was five years old. I never had a dog then. Now, I always keep a kennel. But my father brought home the dog, and I named him Sancho. My Sancho. I teacher that I had in school back at the time had told us about Don Quixote. So there I was, Don Quixote, and this slobbering, beautiful, big, black dog it was my Sancho. Well, he wasn't big at first, but uh, soon he was bigger than me. And I would wear my costume and brandish my wooden sword and shield 
and I will dress my son show up. I tell you, that dog, that dog tolerated me to no end. <laughs> he would let me put paper helmets on his head. I put capes and pretend armor on the dog. Oh my God. Sometimes I pretend he was my horse. <laughs> but he let me do it. He let me do anything I wanted. I was his master. So he let me do all these ridiculous things. Dogs. Dogs are the funniest animals. I mean, you can see them smile sometimes if you watch. Have you ever had a dog? No. No? Well, if you had one, you'd know what I mean. And I took that dog with me everywhere. So he would sleep in the bed with me. He would follow me all over the house, in and out of the kitchen. He laid all over everything, and that would drive my mother crazy. Ay, Dios mío. He would slobber all over everything all the time. Ah, but ah, my father had given him to me, so that was that. He said, Javier, I'm giving you this dog. He's yours. I'm not going to wash him or freedom or anything. He's your dog, he's your responsibility. And I did it, oh, I did it. And I did it for many years. Washing, feeding, everything. Seven years, seven years of feeding, washing, playing, feeding. Huh? You tell me a kid, a young kid like that, who's going to every day take such good care of his dog. But I didn't care because I love my son. Then, one of the worst days of my life, he disappeared. He was gone. I woke up one morning and he just wasn't there. And I looked everywhere for him. Sancho! 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 I had all the ranch hands and the servants looking all over the property. No one found him. No one had any idea where he was. And my mother had to console me for days. My Sancho was gone. I cried. And cried like a baby. And I could tell that this made my father very disappointed, but I didn't care. I cried like a little girl for a week. And then after a week, my sadness turned into a mild kind of melancholy. And a week later, well, they say time heals all wounds, no? Besides, it was the week of my birthday. And the evidence of a particularly large celebration to come. I had been arriving at the house a few days before. On that day, it was quite the part. There must have been 200 people there. All the children from the school, see, the prettiest girls from the town, the priests from the church, all of my father's business partners, ah, oh, music, dancing, what a wonderful day, beautiful. And I knew my parents had gone through so much effort because I had suffered so much during the week. It made me feel good to know that they would do so much. I mean. Don't get me wrong, I was quite a spoiled child, you know. But this, after such a loss, this made me happy, very happy. I went to sleep that night, not thinking at all about my lost Sancho. Nothing was in my head but birthday cake and candy-fed dreams of toys and music and all the pretty girls that had come to the party. 
I was deeply buried in those dreams. When I felt the strong grip of my father's hand shaking me, waking me up, he pulled me out of bed, and he looked at me with an intensity. It wasn't anger. It was a kind of excitement. And also the smell of liquor on his breath was something I was not accustomed to. Get out of bed. He told me, and of course, I always did what he said, but this level of intensity I'd never seen before scared me, so I quickly did his talk. <laughs> I must have been two or three in the morning. And he took me out of the house still wearing my pajamas. I could see my breath. I asked him where we were going, but he just drank from his tequila bottle and he told me to be quiet. Hmm. He put his hand on my shoulder and he pushed me toward the old barn. I was a few hundred yards away from the house and I could see that the lights were on and I could hear some men laughing, drunken sounding laughter. I had seen my father take a drink now or then, but I had never seen him drunk, which he certainly was. But he led me in, and I could see several men were there, some of his associates, you know, men who worked for him. Some of them I remember because whenever they came around, they always frightened me. I remember the smell of liquor, cigar smoke, manure. They all made way for me as I walked the gauntlet, each of them patting me on the back with their heavy calloused hands, calling me jefe, en hombronazo, some with growing smiles on their faces. Others more Green, serious expressions. As I made my way through this corridor of men, I noticed a wide set of stairs that led up to a large pen where the ranch hand would sometimes walk the horses in circles to stretch their legs. It was also where the mares gave birth to the foals. Well, my father took me down to it, and he closed the gate behind me. I was a bit confused, but I thought there must be some kind of present for me there on the other end. The other side of the pen was completely dark, but I could see some sort of shape in the darkness. One of my father's associates, a fat man with a thick mustache named Guillermo, he stood next to my father, grinning down at me. And I remember thinking, that mustache could prick my finger. And he tossed a machete down next to me. When I think back to my thought then, huh, I thought it was a bit much to open a piñata with a machete, huh? <laughs> the mind of a child. At that moment, I heard a strange yet familiar sound. A low groan come out of the corner, and the shape that I couldn't make out at first began to move toward me. It was Sancho. I'd say it was him. Physically, I suppose it was the same dog, but my immediate sense of joy quickly turned to horror as he came into the light. Even against his dark brown and black fur, I could see the dry blood, the lacerations on his hide, rope burns, open festering welts on his head and back, cigar burns.
My first thought was to think that he had been caught in barbed wire for days, because that's how he looked. But no. That weird look in his eye that I had never seen before. I even heard the low growl deep in his throat. But my feelings for him made any sense of caution give way to concern. So I reached toward him, hand extended, reaching out to comfort him. It did not occur to me that my father had taken Sancho and given him to his associates and that during those past weeks, the animal had endured such brutality that they had driven away from him any love for me or any sense of anything other than violence and pain. He looked at me as though he had never seen me before. There was nothing left of the dog I had spent so many years with. Two weeks had reverted him back to his primal nature. I rushed to comfort him. And his jaws clamped down on my hand like a vice, crushing it like paper, tearing the flesh beneath his teeth. The new nature of our relationship was quickly known to me as he thrashed me about like a rag doll all over that straw, dirt, and shit-smelling pen. When he released my hand, his teeth tore into my foot, my leg, shredding bow. Then he was on top of me. Foaming saliva dripping onto my face and mouth as he tried to get past my arms to my neck. Somehow, I kicked him onto his back for a moment. And I grabbed a machete off the floor. I hacked my Sancho's flesh and bones to pieces like a wild beast on that dirt, straw, and sheet-covered floor until he stopped moving. And then there I stood, covered in blood, dirt, and sweat, chest heaving, too shocked for tears, and my father came to me and hugged me, saying, muy bien, mijo, very good. And the fat man, Guillermo, he led the rest of the men in saying my name. She was beautiful, wasn't she? 
She's about as beautiful as she was and good in bed. I knew the bitch was gonna be a problem eventually. <laughs> you can take the girl out of the whorehouse, but never the whore out of the girl. As a mistress, though, she was very pleasing. I knew her in the most intimate ways, in all the ways that a man could know a woman. But last night, when she was sitting in front of me, similar to how you are now, that's when we really got to know each other. And she didn't know where you put it. Or well, believe me, she would have told me. It didn't take much, though, for her to tell me that you were involved. <sighs> and now, my friend, you and I are going to get to know each other very well, too. We are going to spend some very, very intimate times together. And afterward, this is not going to end well for you. Where's the money? 